Hi guys, greetings from Bulgaria. I'm Anton and in this new video of the Lambda Test video channel, we're going to discuss a very common error uh, when you write your uh, Selenium test element, not interactable exception. And um, in this tutorial, uh, first we're going to discuss what is this error when it occurs. We're going to see many code demos. And of course, I will show you the best practices uh, and solutions uh, for all of those causes. But if you uh, haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please hit the ring bell um, uh, in the channel so that you get notified when we release uh, new videos. New videos appear each week uh, and they are quite informative. Also, don't forget to check the Lambda Test blog where uh, each week a new article appears. There are many awesome articles that will help you definitely to be a much better engineer. Um, and as you know, uh, there are a lot of code examples during our uh, video sessions. So you will find in the description below uh, many helpful resources and a link to the GitHub repo with all the examples. So uh, let's discuss this error. Um, there is a really great article uh, called How to deal with element not clickable at point exception. Uh, again, uh, there are different names across the releases of Selenium about this error. Right now it's called element not interactable exception. So what is this error? For sure, check this blog post, it's really detailed. It has uh, other examples than the ones that I'm going to show you. Uh, but basically this exception occurs when the element uh, we want to interact with or click is not clickable at, uh, at that point. This is essentially means that uh, the click operation uh, on the web element would result in an exception. So what are the causes of the exception? First, let's deep dive in uh, these various causes. Uh, in order to do so, um, I'm going to use the Lambda Test Playground to show you uh, some of the scenarios. And also I'm going to use uh, my own uh, demo website. Um, so first, there is a higher probability of getting this error with the Chrome browser um, because Chrome never calculates the exact location of any web element. Instead, it tries to perform a click in the middle, in the middle uh, of the element. And which means that you might this error more often uh, running the tests in Chrome and most probably in Edge as well because they use the same engine. Uh, does this mean that there is a zero possibility of witnessing this exception when running uh, your tests on other browsers, browsers like uh, Firefox or Safari or Opera? Um, the underlying implementation differs from one browser engine to another, so because of times uh, because of that, sometimes you may encounter this exception when clicking an element at a specific point or a coordinate. Um, there are four, four major um, causes for this. Uh, the first one is when, when uh, a button is disabled. For example, this button here right now, it is disabled. How I can understand that? Well, if we check here the HTML, you will see this disabled disabled attribute. And if we try to click it, uh, you will receive this error. Um, another problem is when, um, so this is when it's uh, disabled. Then another type of error is when the element is not there loaded on the page or when there is an overlap uh, with each other. There is another element on top or uh, there is a failure when you try to find the element using coordinates. So let's discuss this one by one. So uh, first, when we try to click uh, a disabled button like this, uh, I can show you a, a demo project. Um, this is uh, like a standard, a standard uh, setup using JUnit uh, and WebDriver. If you are not familiar with JUnit, I suggest you to check. Uh, there are uh, a lot of videos on the Lambda Test channel about JUnit that I recorded previously. Uh, and yeah, so here I used Maven for 
dependency uh, tooling. And uh, in order to use JUnit 5, uh, we installed these dependencies here. Uh, Jupyter stands for um, the latest release, JUnit 5. So here I installed the three dependencies that we need, API engine and params if we are going to use uh, data-driven tests. And I uh, installed basically here the latest uh, Java client, uh, which is 4.11. Uh, and if you are following uh, the latest releases of Selenium, uh, this is a really major release, 4.11, because they internally now use the latest Selenium Manager, uh, which over time will replace completely this third-party dependencies called WebDriver Manager. Uh, if you uh, wrote any um, Selenium tests, you know that uh, for years now, we were using the WebDriver Manager to download the correct driver depending on our browser version. And nowadays, with this 4.11, everything is happening behind the scenes because of the Selenium Manager. So here uh, I have a simple class where uh, I define my tests. Uh, we have an instance to the driver and actions and uh, web driver weight uh, uh, classes. Uh, actions class, we use it to perform, for example, drag and drop or to focus on a specific element. You will see um, in a few minutes. And also we use the web driver wait for explicitly waiting for, uh, for example, the element to be visible uh, in uh, similar weights. Uh, definitely we will use them uh, in order to solve some of the causes. So before each test, um, we are downloading the driver. You can download it only once if you execute the before all method, but we are starting the driver and then we are initializing the actions in the web driver wait. In the end of each test, we are closing the browser. And um, for example, the case that I wanted to show you first with the disabled button, uh, we just navigated to this particular page that I showed you. I found the button at the cart and I tried to click it. And afterwards, here it is, we receive this uh, error element not interactable exception. In many cases, um, in, in this particular case that I showed you, actually, this is not a bug. This is the expected behavior of the website because right now this is not available and this is why the text here uh, has been changed and, uh, uh, and the button is disabled, uh, which means that we need to have some conditional logic probably if you use page object models. Um, something that might help you, for example, if you have such a page object, if you're not familiar with uh, uh, page object model design pattern, check there is a dedicated video about it on the channel. Uh, but yeah, basically all the elements have this uh, method called is enabled, which means if it's true, you can click the element, but uh, if this returns false, it means that it's disabled. Um, so inside your page object, uh, you might just perform a click if the button is enabled. This is one thing that you can do. Another thing that you can do is if we use the explicit weight, uh, there again, there is a dedicated video that you will find in the description about WebDriver weight. But basically, uh, this WebDriver weight class, it gives us this method until, and we have this special class uh, expected conditions. And here we have a bunch of methods. Uh, one of them is to wait for element to be clickable. And here we might provide the actual element or the bilocator, it will be up to you. But basically, this will wait for, for example, 30 seconds until the button is enabled, and then we're going to click it. In many scenarios, this will be a valid uh, like solution to our problem. Uh, but anyway, in this case, uh, actually, the right behavior is that we need to use JUnit assertions to check that this button is actually uh, disabled, um, right? We, we need to check that it's disabled because this is the right, the right uh, behavior right now. Uh, and another thing that we might check is uh, we might check that uh, the name uh, here, the text inside, it's not add to cart, but to three days, which is again, um, something uh, like from the logic of the website. Um, if always you need to pass the screen, many often when we automate such cases, we use the internal APIs of the website, for example, Web API, 
or database go uh, to set up the availability of these products. Maybe we need to uh, perform this test data management to uh, make this product available. I don't know. It really depends what you want to test. Uh, let's move on. Another uh, thing that we might check uh, is uh, the second the second thing that I mentioned. When when uh, the web element is not yet available or it's in the DOM but it's not visible, and uh, I have the perfect example for this. If I click Add to Cart, um, let's say for this product, I may go to View Cart, and when we go to the View Cart. Here you see the prices, I have this product, I can increase the quantity, etc. But you see this expandable section here. If I expand it, I can change the country where I want to ship my product. So in many cases, we will want to fill uh, all of these drop downs here. Uh, but imagine that there is a bug and this is not expandable. This drop down here, it will be still in the HTML. So WebDriver will be able to locate it. But when you try to click it, it won't be visible yet. And you will receive the same error. Uh, and actually, I have implemented exactly this particular test. It's right here. We navigate to the product. I click Add to Cart. And um, right here, uh, this is this is the block where uh, this is the expandable block. This is the view card. This is add to cart view card that, that appears on top. And uh, imagine that for some reason this is not working, or the locator is wrong, or just the expandable the JavaScript is not working that expands the uh, the block. And then when you try to click here, it won't work. Uh, and again, the element is there, but it's not displayed yet. Um, or uh, it might be like a problem of time. For example, when you expand it, you try to click too fast. In order to um, solve this problem, again, you can use WebDriver wait, uh, wait for element to be clickable. Um, now, um, there is a third cause that I'm going to demonstrate you here on my website, demo website for selling rockets. Um, do you see now that uh, here, as you can see, not the whole site is refreshed every time, but instead we are using Ajax calls, asynchronous JavaScript for loading just a particular screen, just a particular part uh, of the page. Uh, and many, most of the modern websites actually using React, Angular, or jQuery, uh, they're behaving the same way. And right now, imagine that if we want to update the quantity here, we need to click Update, and then immediately we want to proceed to the checkout. But see what happens. When I click the Update card, this spinner appears on top of my button. If I try to click it, it will fail. Again, two things might help here. The first is to use WebDriver wait, but sometimes in such occasions where there are um, asynchronous requests, this won't work. The solution here uh, will be to use again WebDriver wait, uh, but in a slightly different way. Uh, we can define a private method here, we, we, we will use a little bit of JavaScript. It really depends on the underlying technology, front-end technology, whether this is jQuery or React or Angular. Uh, in my case here on the demo website, we are using jQuery. So uh, I'm converting the driver here uh, to JavaScript executor. This helped me and gives me access to this method execute script. This allows me in the browser to execute particular JavaScript. And the thing that I'm doing here is that using the web driver wait, I'm defining anonymous method here where we will repeat uh, this line here a few times until this condition is true. And the thing that I'm executing here is I'm saying, please return if there are any active requests from the jQuery or the asynchronous JavaScript. When there's zero, then we are ready. There are no updates. I can continue. 
Um, this is a really popular solution in, uh, in uh, modern uh, web automation testing. We use the wait for Ajax to wait uh, for um, these cases. Another thing uh, that might happen is, especially when you have pages that are really long, and it depends on the functionality, but sometimes we might need to click on a button um, using coordinates. Uh, how you can do that? Uh, well, let me show you. Uh, for example, we might use the actions class that I showed you before, uh, actions, and, and here we put random coordinates, right? Um, why you need, may need that? Really, again, there are many complex websites where, for example, you have an editor, you have a drawing pen or something else. Um, you might need to do that. If you use coordinates, many often, especially with cases like this, where for example, new elements appear or buttons are disappearing, etc. If you try to use the coordinates, there are two problems. The first one is that uh, if many often uh, when you start the browser, it is not maximized. So the first rule and the first thing that can help you is to maximize the browser. This is the first thing that we need to do. So let's do that. In order to do it, um, here, uh, in where we uh, start the browser, we can say driver dot manage dot uh, window dot maximize. This will maximize always our browser. Excellent. And now the another thing that we need to do again, um, if we click by uh, you know by offset, um, we might need first to move to the element to move to a specific element before clicking it. For example, imagine that um, we want to click here uh, to some element, no matter which it is, how we find it. U using the actions, uh, we have the move to element. This will scroll down to the element, and then we are going to click. Many often, uh, this is causing the error uh, when it's out of focus. Another way how you can um, scroll down to an element, but I don't suggest to do it, is via JavaScript. Um, again, we need to cast the driver to the JavaScript executor, and then we can scroll into view, and uh, this will work. Again, the coordinates are used to identify the element in the test, and it's always considered a good practice to maximize your browser window. This ensures that the coordinates defined in your test match with those on the page, and as the browser uh, in the maximized state, and um, this is how you need to avoid this error. Um, so yeah, um, and when it's not in the focus, again, you might see again this error, and you need to switch to it. Uh, these are the two ways. Move to element, I usually prefer to use actions. Some people, as uh, you might read somewhere, um, as a workaround, you might click even elements via JavaScript. Usually, this is not necessary. And um, if you use some of the other approaches, this will solve 99% of your problems. Um, so yeah, we saw, we saw all the best practices. I hope that this video uh, was useful to you. If you have any comments, put them in, uh, in the comment section below. And uh, any any questions or suggestions? Um, don't forget to check the Lambda Test blog and uh, the community website. Um, also, don't forget to get your free cer uh, certification about JUnit, Selenium, etc. On the Lambda Test uh, website. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.